Are you looking to start your pizza business and don't know the first thing about permits? Don't you worry. Today I talk with Liz and she describes the process that she went through going back and forth with her county health department and how she ultimately got started with her pizza business. Can't wait to share this with you. Check it out. Peace. Earlier you mentioned uh, that you were going back and forth uh, with the health, de health department and maybe we can dig in a little bit about that, about how you kept hope and faith alive that you were finally going to get your permits. Because I think you had mentioned to me in, in a, a, offline that it was, it was, it was kind of difficult. Um, I, w I don't know difficult so much as just time consuming. And um, yeah, and so I, I went back and counted. I have, um, shoot, I emailed him again. So before a week ago, I had like 97 emails between a few health department people and I. Um, and I will say this, there are probably some health departments that are a pain to work with, but mine and our county has been really great. Um, every time I called or emailed with a question, I got answers back. I got links sometimes when I was talking about equipment needs. Um, I could send them links before. So before I purchased certain things, I was shooting them like, hey, this is the fridge I want to get. Um, and he looked it up and he was like, oh, this is actually the Canadian rating of what we want. So yeah, you're fine. That works for me. Um, and so I think I was going to tell anybody like play ball. So just call them and say, this is what I want to do. How do I figure it out? And I know that it's totally different in all parts of the country. I know you mentioned one time on something about what the cost was for you and it's totally different for me. Um, but I feel like when I called them originally, I said, Hey, what can I do? And she said, here's what you can do. And then she sent me an email that included the three different types of licensing I could get to do this at a public place, like a brewery. Um, and one of those was temporary licenses. And she said, they are not the best decision financially long-term and they have some stipulations. So I could, once I apply for one, I can only use it at the same location for 14 days. You can't have so many in a row. There's rules. But she said, do this because then you might be able to decide if this is something you actually want to do. And so for me, yes. So the very first time I did on location, I had to apply with them they had to come out the day that I started, like my cheese was in a package, nothing was open. I had to get it signed off on that I was ready to go. Um, but then I was good and I was able to get away with um, some differences. So like I could have everything in an ice chest where now I have to have it in a fridge. And I didn't have to have electricity, but now I have to um, for hand washing and other stuff. And so I'm really glad that I took that advice because it allowed me to do it I think about four times last year. So I ended up cooking, I don't know, like a dozen, 12, 15 times within those licenses. Cause I try to like start it on a Thursday and use it like Thursday, Saturday, and the next Thursday. Like I tried to take advantage of the whole two weeks and it allowed me to see like, yes, I do want to do this. So then I went back to them and said, okay, now what are my next steps? What do I have to do to do this permanently? And then they responded, um, had to take a class, then had to apply back and work forth with paperwork. So our health department is very thorough. I've heard in the Metro Detroit area, like if you go with our county, um, they are going to make sure that you do everything how you're supposed to do it. Um, they're not going to be lax about anything, but they also want you to do things well. So they're going to set you up to do things well. I didn't, I didn't feel like I'm being fought with. Now, again, other counties and other states might be totally different, but. <laughs> yeah, right. Your mileage may vary, um, but I'm super impressed because, yeah, drastically. I mean, you hear horror, you hear of horror stories um, and it's like, t it takes forever to get permits or, uh, where I'm at and this and that, um, or it's expensive. Um, but what I like about your story is that they were willing and able to help 
and they gave some great suggestions that I think we have a similar thing. I want to say it's called a temporary food stall. Um, but I didn't even like click. It didn't even click for me to like look into that more. Um, just to, it's like a, you know, testing out your proof of concept. You don't want to dump all of your eggs in one basket and then end up not liking it. Right. For sure. And we, I'm hitting, figuring out that different townships have different rules when it comes to the fire department. It's the big push right now is that you're, you have to be inspected by the fire department. Um, but again, there were some people on a Facebook, like Michigan food truck group kind of upset about it. And the one guy said, like, if you want to play ball, play ball. Like if you want to do food in that town, play by their rules, figure it out and do the rules. And if it's not worth it, then just don't do business in that town. Um, for me, I want to do business in my town. So I got to figure it out. That's lovely. I mean, I guess when you're, when you're going from places and starting to cater, it's like, what is the workflow for you? Do you get like invitations for you to go to a different township and then you're off to check what their requirements are and then you respond to them? How, do, how does it work for you? So figuring all that out right now, um, some, some are really, some townships and towns are really like clear on what their rules are. Um, for ours, I, we live in the village and so the village I'm fine, but once I go into the township, it changes. So I, um, am in the process of getting our township license, like mobile food license. Um, but if I'm at a private event, I don't have to apply for an extra permit or something because I'm not like peddling my wares, I guess. Like I'm not soliciting business out at a fair kind of thing. So they, you don't have to have a different um, permit for that. Um, so yeah, it is kind of navigating what that looks like to figure out for me so far. I haven't had too many outside of our area that I need to then go figure out, but it is like, yeah, I might say no to you. Mm -hmm. And I might, and I might say no to you. And if you don't like that, then you might want to go tell your township that their rule is too much. That's, yeah, that is hard. Um, in terms of the, uh, catering, do you just have one license for that? And are, are you required to like have a commissary? Um, what are so, the rules for that for you? So I am considered in the state of Michigan, a mobile food unit and I can do a, a public event. I can do a private event that covers me with that. Um, I because it's pizza and it's dough, um, I know some people have fully enclosed trailers and they figure that out. I don't. Um, I have a coffee shop in our town that I use fridge and countertop space to mix dough and then store it in there and put cheese and other stuff. Um, it's not huge, so I can't like fill the whole place because they have a business to run. And that was one of the other um, health department requirements, they want to make sure that you don't hinder that business and that business doesn't hinder you. So they had to come in and check that out. So for me, um, I have all of anything that I want to do prep wise ahead of time, I'll do there. But then um, I can also do food prep on my app at like at a location. And so I am a tent unit. Um, and we have a pop up 10 by 10 tent and we can be sustained completely in that or we're next to our trailer and the trailer is just big enough to house a refrigerator and everything else that I need. Um, it's probably a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but that allows me to walk around in it. So that is a benefit then <laughs> because for a while it was, everything was into my car and out of my car. And it, so taking out every car seat, taking out the back seats, putting in a tent and then you're done with an event and you have an uni that is really hot. And, um, so I got really good at like wrapping an uni with a quilt and carrying it into my car. Um, it's a little bit more classy. It's a little bit more classy now when it's like on a cart and you just roll it away and put it in a trailer and not have to. 
that's good. Um, like uh, that one pop up that I was telling you about with Tio's Pizza, we didn't have a cart, and I was like, oh crap, this is like, this is a lot of work. And you don't, you do not realize how heavy those are until they're hot. Thanks for taking the time to listen. If you want to see the full entire episode, there's going to be a link right here at the very top. Click that link and listen to the entire show. Also, if you want to be notified when there's a new show, feel free to subscribe down below to the YouTube channel, or you can search for the What's Good Dough podcast on any of your favorite streaming platforms. We'll be there. Check it out. We have a new show every Friday. Take care. Until next time. Peace.